Hello, saints, my kings and queens, or my kingdom builders. Um, before I go to bed, I wanted to um just upload some faith talk for tomorrow morning for you guys to listen to some morning inspiration. So I said, let me do it tonight, and um, so I thank those that's have come into the room to hear with us at the Lord once again. Today I want to talk about um, what does it mean that godliness with contentment is great gain? What does it mean that godliness with contentment is great gain? I'm coming from 1 Timothy 6 and 6. Godliness with contentment is great gain. First, um, Timothy is um, a letter from is is it's, it's a, First Timothy is a letter from the Apostle Paul to his young protege Timothy to encourage him in his new role as a church leader. Chapter six begins with a description of true godliness. He warns Timothy about those who think that godliness is a means for financial gain. He describes corrupt teachers who will divert believers from true faith in Christ by arguing or arguing over words, creating trivial controversies and pursuing great rich schemes, great rich schemes. Paul clarifies the meaning of godliness and emphasizes that it is the opposite of what these troublemakers portray it to be. Um, God, when we talk about godliness, God himself is the power of godliness. The Holy Spirit is the life force, the life force of it, because that would live within us. The godliness is the Holy Spirit living in with, within us today. Godliness is the, um, is the power which brings a man to God and binds him to him. That closeness. Godliness is that which creates repentance towards God and faith in him. Godliness is the result of a great change of heart in reference to God and his character. Godliness looks towards God and mourns its distance from him. Godliness hastens to draw nigh and rests not till it is at home with God. No matter where, when you get pulled out the will of God, once you've been in him and you know when you fall away from it, it's like you just can't get it right. Like your soul cries out because it's, it's, it's missing that, that, that peace. The Holy Spirit is, is grieving and it's time for you to get back to your place in God. Um, godliness makes makes a man like, like God. Godliness leads a man to love God and to serve God. It brings the fear of God before his eyes and the love of God into his heart. Godliness leads to consecration, to sanctification and concentration. Sanctification, concentr concentration, and consecration. The godly man seeks first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and expects other things to be added to him. Godliness makes a man commune with God to give him a partnership with God in his glorious designs so it prepares him to dwell with God forever. God often calls his saints to suffer material want in this life and therefore God's people should not set their hope on uncertainty of riches and that's in 1 Timothy 6 and 17. Even if someone were to gain great riches in, in this life, the gain is short-lived because, as we all know, there are, there are no, no U-Hauls, you know, going behind the hearse. There are no U-Hauls going behind the hearse. Simply put, we came into the world with nothing and we're leaving with nothing. Nothing materialistic anyway. Nothing materialistic. So we could store up all the houses, the cars, the land, the this and the that. And guess what? We can't take it with us. 
we can't take it with we can't take it with us and it's not that it's not good for us to have but it's our mindset when we when we get these things how do we react once we get them are we doing it for the glory of God or are we being just greedy and just being a glutton about having materialistic stuff just to to, to boast and brag on um Craving wealth leads to evil, ruin, and destruction. 1 Timothy 6, 9, and 10. Paul encourages his readers to know that there is great gain in godliness. When it is, it is combined with contentment, the basic necessity of life. That's in 1 Timothy 6 and 8. Our God is a God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. 1 Timothy 6 and 17. Paul commands the righteous rich to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share. 1 Timothy 6 and 18. Not to sell everything they ha they have and become poor. Um, they are to be rich in good and good works so that they might so that they might store up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future. Um, so that they may take hold of life that that really is life. First Timothy six and nineteen. In other words, godliness is a means of gain as long as that gain is understood as life and blessings in the presence of God and not being greedy for money. I read that again. In other words, godliness is a means of gain. As long as that gain is understood as life and blessings in the presence of God and not being greedy for money. That's why Paul explains um, Jesus' teaching um, in 1 Timothy 6, 18, 19. You know, store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moths nor, um, nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. Um you know, because as we say, treasures here on earth, people, you know how people are. You get a little something, they come, you, they ready to take it. They ready to steal it. But when you store up things richly in heaven, it's forever. It's forever. And that's, you know, the spirit of God, loving God, doing things for the glory of God. Um, there are many reasons why someone could want more money. And some of them could be bad but others can be good reasons why also. If someone wanted more money for the status, like I said, you know, luxury, their ego, stuff like that, that would fall under a bad reason. On the other hand, if someone wanted money, more money to earn for like, to provide for their family, you know, to give into the, a ministry or a charity or in, in, uh, invest in creating good, good services that will allow the community to thrive, then that would be a reason to want more money that's good money, you know, because there is good and bad money. Um, the blas blasphemous teaching that crept into the church in Timothy day is still common in today's Christianity. We, com we, we commonly hear of preachers and Christians using their positions of influence to collect a large amount of money or wealth um, so that they can live this luxurious lifestyle. They take all kinds of offerings until they shake, pretty much they shake your pockets dry. Um, they take God's promises of blessings, you know, that's in De Deuteronomy 28 and 2 and Psalms 21 and 6 and um, create a, re a religion out of it. You know, pretty much they tell you Oh, the Lord said this and the Lord said that, and it's not really so. Just think of the preachers back in the day where they had all this, oh, the big rings and the um, luxury cars and all this, and they look like pimps, but they were pimps in the pulpit, pimps in the pulpit. So um, that's what that verse is pretty much talking about. And then they talking to the people like, you know, be like me. And that's they're taking the focus off of God and putting it on them to justify what they're doing, which is wrong. Those who want to get rich um, fall into temptation and a trap 
and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs, chasing at, chasing at the, not what God sent you to, but sometimes what your flesh is chasing, chasing at the, and things start going, you know, going, going crazy, going crazy. That's why you see a lot of, you know, stars and actresses and actors and rappers and singers. They want that dream. And it's okay to dream, but some most of them they don't put God in it. They just see the fame and the money. That's what they want: the fame and the fame and the money. And therefore, they wind up doing things they really don't have no business doing just to get it. Um, and pretty much that's why you can't fool up on social media with all these um, so-called spiritual channels. You know, since a lot of us are home. Like I said before, and those um, a lot of people have lost jobs, and they're turning to the internet to make money. And the easiest way to um, to make money is to talk about the word of God to draw people in, um, and having that cunning spirit and that zaps right into their pocketbook, you know. And as we know, everyone can claim to be a preacher these days. Everybody the preacher on um, social media, social media. That's why you have to be led by the spirit and know when somebody's trying to draw you in for the wrong for the wrong reasons or to be part of a part of their clique. The devil is a liar. I have been in so many channels, you know, and see that either their spirit is off or and and when I make a comment of the truth, they either take it down or overlook it or they read a little part of it and leave the rest out. Um, but the Lord tells us in um, Isaiah 58 and 1, Cry loud and spare not. Cry loud and spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Therefore, when you are these um, spiritual channels or these religious channels and you see something that right, not right either, you leave it alone or you can um, make a comment and just leave it alone because the word is not to be argued, not for argue or controversy or debate. We're not going to argue about the word of God and I'm not going to argue about somebody else's faith. But if I'm on it and I hear something and it doesn't sit right in my spirit, I'm not going to correct the person, but I'm going to say what thus said the Lord, and they could take it for what it's worth. They could take it for what it's worth. But um, that's on me if I hear something and I know it's not right and I don't say anything. And I may not come back there no more, but I left them with a word to think about. No, no, pretty much nobody can shut me up when it comes to speaking or teaching or, or preaching of God's word, however you want to call it. Um, and if you're in one of those channels and you know that someone's spirit is off and you don't say anything, shame on you, shame on you because you just allowed it like pretty much it's like, don't go ahead on with that stuff. You pretty much letting them, especially if it's a channel you visit a little often, if it's just a fly by channel that you've never been on before, then, you know, keep it moving. But if it's a channel that you visit and you see things that's going to the left, when you notice that things ain't too right up in there, yeah, it's it's okay to speak your opinion. Um, let God be true and every human being a liar, as it is written, so that you may be um, proved right when you speak and prevail when judged. Romans 3 and 4, because God is going to judge you on. Remember you was in that chat and all that mess was going on? You sat there and you just joined in and you ain't say nothing? You know? Study that self approve and um, you may you, you, and let God word be known. The Bible never says that it's a sin to be rich. The Bible never said that. There are examples in Scripture of God's blessing, blessing His servants with tremendous amount of wealth, and you can find that in Genesis 30, 39 and two, First Samuel eighteen and fourteen, and Second. Chronicles 1, 11 to 12. And if you notice a lot of those spiritual channels and whatnot, 
a lot of them they don't give scripture they just talk about how they feel what they think and what sounds good to the chat you know would they um take a piece of scripture and take it way off somewhere else you know make it uh, they make it about them the thing is to tell the story what happened then and put it in what's going on in today's world that's going to benefit us as Christians. Um, you can add your testimony to it, don't get me wrong. You add your testimony to it or your experiences to um, what you're talking about so people can know that you know what happened then is still going on now and it's real. So, um, What am I up to? But Timothy um, 1, 1 and 16 instructs the wealthy this way. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. The difference is in the heart. The difference is in the heart. Um, both agreed and contentment are, well, yeah, I will say that the difference is, the difference is, is, is in the heart. It's in the heart what you do. I should have took this here out. I always kind of like study stuff before I come on, guys. Um, when we choose to be content with the riches of Christ rather than pursue material riches, our lives will be more in line with God's desire for us. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6 and 21. Is your treasure is in materialistic things that you're selfish and don't want to share, or it's just used just for you to show up with, then that's where your treasures are. That's where your heart is. But if you're, um, you have, you're a given person, you're a helpful person, you want to um, see people thrive, as well as take care of yourself, don't get me wrong, and your family, then... There, your heart will be because you got a heart of God. What does it mean that godliness and con contentment is great gain? Money cannot buy you into the into the kingdom of heaven. Money cannot buy you into the kingdom of heaven. Living a rich life in Jesus will sustain, feed you, and keep you far longer and better than money and material things. Once our eyes is closed, you cannot take none of that stuff with you. So when you standing in front of that throne and it's your judgment day, you ain't going to have a big stack of money. You ain't going to have those cars. You ain't going to have that land. You ain't going to have nothing but you and Jesus and the, the book, that book, to know if you're going to heaven, where you made it to, heaven or hell. I want to make it to heaven. I want to make it to heaven. There's nothing in this world that um, would make me lose or sell my soul um, living out, to live outside of the gain materialistic stuff and lose my sanctification. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. I'd rather have be content in what God blesses me with and when he blesses me with the more, I'll take the more because I know it's going to be, you know, it's okay to take the more because that's what he blessed me with. But this was just a little word for you guys, uh, basically about sustaining yourself as we, especially with the holidays coming up. And even though the holidays is a little different now and people not spending as much money as they usually do, but some people, they're still doing their norm. So just know where your heart lies, do it lies in gain. And all is gain without God, or does it let go and gain with God? I rather um, gain with God and with the Word of God. And um, that's pretty much all I had to say, you guys. So keep the faith. Um, Spin wisely because as we as you can see our economy is not where it should be and everybody's trying to get back slowly and the dollar matters 
the dollar matters. It makes you stop and put the brakes on for a minute that all the money you were spending and all the this and the that and your mindset should be different out of all this here that's going on that you know what so many people have lost their lives and they left so much they left so much and most of the time when they leave it and you leave it to your children or something like that they don't take care of your stuff like you would most of the time they don't even care you leave them a, a house that they lived in from a child guess what they don't want to live there no more when you done worked hard you done you done broke your behind to keep it up and do this and do that and they lose it in a second because they don't care you know they never had no buy you in it um they didn't see what you what you saw in that house all they see is okay we've been living here all our life it's time to go let's just sell it so you know it's so and don't get me wrong it's okay to get those things it's okay to get those things but get those things with a godly heart um pass it down to and, and sit there and talk with your children that you know what you worked hard for and what you like to see and for the legacy you want them to continue with and keep things going because if you just leave just willy-nilly without saying anything they don't care they don't care so you know you have to put God first in all that you do and all that you buy and all that you say and store up your treasures and store up your treasures in heaven be comfortable here on earth there ain't nothing wrong with being comfortable here on earth but know where your heart where your treasures lie your treasures lie in the desires of your heart amen so this is your girl that catch by faith saying you know enjoy your day um i'm uploading this the night before but this when you see it, it's going to be in the morning so you enjoy your day and um keep God first in all that you do um as i always say walk in faith and not in fear and be wise be wise if that and if there's anybody out there that don't know Jesus, just have a small little conversation with him. Repent from your mouth, confess that you are a sinner, ask him to be your personal savior, and that's all it takes. Start living the life of Christ. Get into your Bible. Start out with the NIV Bible. It's easy to read. Pray what you don't before you read it. And that's when, when I had read the Bible when I wasn't saved. I did not understand it. I didn't understand nothing it was saying. But when I got saved, God took the veil off my eyes and unstopped my ears. And I started understanding what I was reading. But before, it was just words. It was just words. But now I understand. I got, he gave me the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to read his word, what he's talking about. So, sometimes you have to pray before you read the Bible. Lord, help me to understand, to understand you. To understand the purpose for my life because everything everything under the sun is in that book everything there's nothing new that's going on to in today's world that didn't happen back then that God ain't put anybody through there's nothing new that's going on nothing um, people may say well, this pandemic is new it's new to us but they ain't new back then because they had um, sickness diseases and all that type of stuff across their land back then you know but it's new to us because we never walked through it and and through it all god still have a hedge has a hedge on us you know so be safe out there be wise out there don't think that rona ain't real because it is now me yeah, rona, rona is real but I think they're just putting more out there to keep people still, making the numbers reach all these crazy, crazy numbers like that. But the hospital is empty. Come on, somebody. But um, it's just sometimes the trick of the enemy to do a control thing. But some people are are sick, and um, we just have to be mindful. That's 
people are still not taking care of themselves as they should. So you just be careful and take care of yourself and with your surroundings so you won't bring up the home to your loved ones. Amen. So on that note, I'm going to pray you guys out. Um, I'll be on tonight. Yeah, I'll be on tonight. And um, I will talk to you then. So let me just give you a little benediction. Let the dead, oops, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that you all go in peace this morning. Um, say a short little prayer. Say a short little prayer as you're walking out the door, as you're driving in your car, you know, as you're brushing your teeth, as, no matter what you're doing. Just take out a few minutes just to speak to God and be thankful. Oh, we, not only just for Thanksgiving. Be thankful each and every day that you open up your eyes, each and every day that you get out your own bed, each and every day that you breathe this stale air and that heart beats. Because guess what? God still got you here, and he still got you here for a reason, a season, a, and a purpose. And your season is not up yet. Not if he's still waking you up. He's still got some stuff for you to do. Find your purpose in life. Enjoy it and walk with Christ. Thank you guys for tuning in with me today. This is your girl, Dipper Catch by Faith, saying peace. I love you. And I will see y'all later. Later.